What's going on everyone? Hi there, my name is Mitchell Coleman and I am an alcoholic and I hope you had a very safe new year or the year of 2021. It is now 2022 and I just wanted to make this video for the court program that I was in, DWI court, and they have you write a letter to alcohol, like a breakup letter. And I was really pleased with mine, so I figured I would make a video of it, and um, I will be reading off my paper because I can't memorize all of it. Here's my letter to alcohol, and I really hope this helps someone out there. Um, this is just my breakup letter. My letter to alcohol. Well, here we go. This is going to be something different that might be painful for both of us. I would have done this in person, but I'm more of the breakup through a text type of guy because really, I don't want to physically be around you again. We have had a very toxic relationship for a very long, long time. There were times that we broke up before and I was doing pretty well. But when things went wrong, all I wanted to do was pay you a visit. And once I saw you again, I couldn't help myself because my love for you was really based on a relationship of codependency. I truly thought that I needed you to complete me. I thought that I was not enough without you. You always made me feel comfortable in my own skin when I was in social situations. You had me believing that my own insecurities and low self-esteem were because I wasn't with you. I thought that I was not capable of handling anything, whether that was a good situation or a bad situation, without you by my side. You were very understanding of my need to be with other people too, which made the relationship pretty amazing for a while because I can enjoy experiencing love with another as well. So for someone like me who was very selfish and self-centered, it turned out to be a match made in heaven. It's so odd how blind I was. Looking back now, I can actually see that the heaven I thought you were creating for me was in actuality, a living hell. You are a cunning and baffling succubus. You created a false dream that seduced me for a very long portion of my life. At times you took control of me so heavily that I was in a complete blackout, not even knowing what I was doing. Almost as if I was possessed by an evil spirit, or many spirits, you may say. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. I love that quote because it's very relatable to my coexistence with you. I lived in an imaginary world where I was led to believe that it was you that made me who I am. That you were the one who had finally solved all of my problems of loneliness and depression. You were there for me always, and that was a comfort that I was not accustomed to, considering the fact that I was pretty accustomed to having people walk out on me on several occasions for a majority of my life. Some of these abandonments were out of my control, but a fair share of them were because of my own selfishness. At first, some of these partners were okay with me sharing my love with you. Once I began only spending my time and my money with you, had it become a problem. A couple times I'd been given an ultimatum. It was either them or you. I would say what they wanted to hear. I would always say, okay, you're right, and then end it with you. Things would start getting back to normal. Then you would call again. You called a lot. I tried to block your number, but you always found a way to get to me. You even used some of my friends to get me back. You convinced them even to let me know that you were not really that bad. That it was me who was being too clingy with you and trying to spend too much time with you. It was very convincing too. I wanted to believe it. Of course that never worked though. So to keep everyone happy, I started having an affair with you. I would secretly go to meet you at gas stations, hotels, bars. I would even go as far as hiding you in my garage, in the wheelbarrow under a tarp, so you wouldn't be seen and you wouldn't get cold in the winter time. Well, you know what they say, what's kept in the dark will always find its way to the light. How accurate that is. Quite, I've had quite a tumultuous relationship with you. You were never even just mine. You got around all over with everyone I knew and grew up with. Your evil spirit has had a spell cast over both sides of my family for generations. I've seen you kill people that I love. You've even found a way to kill people that never even wanted anything to do with you in the first place. You've killed brothers, sisters, mothers, and fathers. You have killed the old and the young all the same. You have murdered innocent children that never even had a chance to experience the beautiful life we've been given by God. Cutting their lives so much shorter than that which was meant to be a life of possibilities, opportunities, and love. 
generations cut off from ever even getting the chance to exist. You have taken some that are still in the stomach growing. I could add so many more of your character defects to the list of reasons why I can no longer have you in my life, but I think that should be enough for you to understand why I won't allow you to poison me ever again. I know you would just love to have me back and to watch your curse continue to run its course on me and the generation I have helped create. My children, my two amazing, beautiful daughters, Cecilia Marie Coleman and Clarissa Autumn Coleman, will never have to see what I was a witness to growing up and also what I had become at one point in my life. The curse will end with me. I am cutting the cord that has had me attached to you. I have found certain things that I need to do that will keep me from allowing you back into my life again. These are important tools that will have to be done often and I will have to do this for the rest of my life. All of them are not things that are even that difficult. They are really things that are just good and healthy habits that will help me become the best version of myself I can be, so I may be that version for the rest of society and the world. I've been burned by you too many times before and I know I can never trust you again. More importantly, I cannot trust myself around you anymore. You are a subtle foe and you have your ways of trying to creep back in. I can't erase you from existence and I know that I will be around you from time to time. We have a lot of mutual friends. I can be around you at certain times and that's okay. Not for long periods of time though, because I'm not so naive to think that I will never see you again. You're everywhere. You disappear from my life at times and I am at peace.